Good day students, welcome to mathcodeserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to find the zeros of higher degree polynomials. The method we're going to be employing here is basically the factoring by grouping algorithm. So let's say we were to find the zeros of the polynomial function f of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 3. If you notice, this is a fourth degree polynomial. But the procedure for solving a polynomial of this nature, for finding the roots or zeros, is very similar to that of a basic quadratic um, trinomial. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, since we're finding the zeros, we're going to set what the function is equal to to zero. Okay. So um, first step is to set two x to the fourth minus seven x squared plus three equals zero. Okay. Now, um, I want to express this as four terms so that I can factor by grouping, all right? So, um, if we're looking at, at this as a quadratic trinomial, um, we'll think about finding A, B, and C and using the AC method. Well, we're going to employ exactly the same procedure here. We'll look for A, which is 2, B, which is negative 7, and C, which is three. We're going to create our nice little X box and we're going to use it to um, factor this uh, polynomial expression by grouping, all right? So as we customarily do with the quadratic case, um, we have AC on the top and B on the bottom. So here AC is six and B is negative seven. Now we're going to figure out two numbers that multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you negative 7. So you can list your multiples of 6 and see which one, which pair can be combined to have a sum of negative 7 and a product of 6. So the answer here is negative 1 and negative 6. Now, anytime you fill out your X game, you always want to do a real quick check just to verify that the numbers you came up with are in fact accurate. So what we'll do here is test it. Negative one times negative six is negative is positive six, which is AC. That's good. And then if we add negative one and negative six, we end up with negative seven, which is perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this seven X square in the middle with negative one and negative six as its coefficients. All right, so we're going to rewrite this um, equation as 2x to the fourth minus x squared minus 6x plus 3 equals 0. Okay, so if you have any questions um, on this tutorial, just feel free to place a comment, your question in the comment section below. Just put a timestamp indicating where you need clarification, and we'll be glad to uh, address that for you. Okay. Now that we have four terms, which is no different from this um, trinomial, fourth degree trinomial right here, we're going to start factoring by grouping, okay? So to help us keep a visual cue as to what our factoring by grouping um, parts are, we're going to divvy up our um, polynomial expression um, down the center, okay? Now let's take a close look at the first two. What is the GCF of 2x to the fourth and x squared? The GCF is x squared, right? So we factor out x squared from the two terms on the left side of our quadratic expression, the left side of our um, partition. Now, after factoring out x squared, it is as though we divided those two terms on the left by x squared. So if we divide or factor out x squared from 2x squared, we end up with, I mean, from 2x to the fourth, we'll end up with 2x squared. And then if we take out x squared from negative 1x squared, we'll end up with just negative 1. So this is what results after factoring out x squared from these two terms. You have 2x squared and negative 1. You can always check your work by distributing back and asking yourself, if I distribute, do I end up with the expression on the top? And the answer is yes. Now let's shift our attention to the two terms to the right side of our partition. 
Now, what is the GCF of negative 6x squared and positive 3? Now, the GCF here, the smallest number that evenly divides both of them, is negative 3. Remember, you always keep the sign um, to the right of the partition, okay? That's always the sign of the second GCF. So now we're factoring out negative 3, and we take that out from 6x, negative 6x squared, that becomes positive 2x squared. And if you take out negative 3 from positive 3, you end up with negative 1. Do not forget, anytime you factor out a negative sign, it results in the inversion of signs. Okay, the terms you factor that negative from will experience a switch in their signs. They become the opposite of what they were before, as we can see here. Okay, so it is equal to zero, of course. Now, after this step, you always want to pause and do a quick check to make sure that your answer is correct. Now, how do we do that? When you're factoring by grouping, after you apply your diamond and factor out the GCF, the two quantities in the parentheses on both sides of your partition must be identical. If they're different, that means that there is an error in your factorization process. So if you look at what we have right now, the two quantities in the parentheses, 2x squared minus 1, are identical, which means that our factorization thus far is correct. Now, how do we proceed? Well, the two quantities in the parentheses, 2x squared on the left and 2x squared, 2x squared minus 1 on the left and 2x squared minus 1 on the right, those are both common factors. So what do you do with common factors when you're factoring an expression? You factor them out. Now, we factor out 2x squared minus 1 from both sides. We place them outside. When you factor them out, it is as though you're dividing again. Okay, so when you divide the both expressions on the left and the right side of the partition by 2x squared minus 1, on the left side, you'll be left with x squared. And on the right side, you'll be left with negative 3. It is as though these two quantities combine into 1, and the GCFs left outside x squared and negative 1, uh, and negative 3, sorry, um, are going to be grouped together in the next parenthesis. Okay, and then of course set it equal to 0. Now we're going to use the zero product property to finish this up as we normally. Uh, did with the uh, quadratic equations. The process here is very identical. So we're going to separate both factors and set them equal to zero independently. Now the solutions to these two equations are going to be the zeros of the polynomial function. Now if you look at the equation to the left, you can solve that in three steps. You add one, divide by two, and take the square root. And that will yield two roots. And on the right side, we just need two steps to get our two roots. Okay, let's take a look at the left side. Add one to both sides. The goal, remember, is to isolate x. So we add one to both sides. We have 2x squared equals 1. To finally get x squared, to get x squared isolated, we divide both sides by 2. So x squared becomes positive one half. Now, how do we undo square? Or was the inverse of our function of square? The inverse is square root. So what we'll do is we take the square root of both sides. Now, anytime you take the square root of a square, you always have to introduce plus or minus. So in this case, x is going to be plus or minus one over root two. Now, how did that happen? When you take the square root of 1 half, when you root the numerator, you get 1. And when you root the denominator, you get negative, I mean, root 2, okay? So those are the first two zeros of this polynomial function. Now, let's shift our attention to the second equation, x squared minus 3 equals 0. To do this, first thing we're going to do is add 3 to both sides. I yield x squared equals positive 3. 
And to finish it off, we put the square, we take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square on the x. So as we indicated earlier, if you take the square root of a square, you have to introduce plus or minus to one side of the equation. Okay, so in this case, we have x equals plus or minus root 3. So we have these are the last two zeros for my polynomial function. We have four zeros in this problem. So our zeros are plus or minus 1 over root 2 and plus or minus 3. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Do give us a thumbs up to show your support. We will appreciate it. Do not forget to subscribe for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on map.serve.com. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.